Hi, I'm Nathan from Py3G and today I will show you how to run a web server on the new Raspberry Pi Pico W using MicroPython. First, we have to set up MicroPython on the Pico W, which works exactly like with the Pico. Click the link in the description to download the MicroPython port for the Pico W. Note that the Pico and the Pico W use different MicroPython versions. After you have downloaded the MicroPython firmware, which ends with .uf2, Hold down the boot cell button while connecting your Raspberry Pi Pico W to your Raspberry Pi. The Pico will mount as a flash drive and then you can copy the MicroPython firmware onto the Pico. The most convenient way to program the Pico W in MicroPython is to use the Thony IDE which is pre-installed on the Raspberry Pi. If you used the Pico, you should be familiar with it. Open the Thony IDE and set the interpreter to MicroPython Raspberry Pi Pico. Tony will connect to the read eval print loop of the Raspberry Pi Pico W and you can run your first MicroPython commands on the shell. Let's run a quick network scan to confirm that everything is working. The first thing we need to do is to import the network module. Then we create a WLAN object and set its active property to true. Finally, we print the results of the WLAN.scan function. You should see a list of all available Wi-Fi routers, which hopefully contains your router as well. Now it is time to program our web server. First, we store our login credentials in a separate file to keep them safe. Create a dictionary called secrets like shown here and fill in your SSID and password. Then save the file on the Pico W under the name secrets.py. Create a new file called main.py, which will run our web server. First, we need to import a couple MicroPython modules. For example, the network module to connect to the Wi-Fi, the uRequests module for HTTP requests, or the socket module for WebSockets. Use the RP2 module to set the country and avoid some possible errors. Then we create and activate a WLAN object, and we can print out the MAC address of our wireless chip. We import the login credentials from our secrets file and connect to the Wi-Fi. While this technically is enough, it's a good idea to add some error correction code. I also added some code so that the onboard LED flashes to indicate that the connection was successful. You can find all our Pico W code examples in our Pico W GitHub repository which I linked below. After we established a connection, we define a function that loads our HTML page as a string. The HTML page itself is very simple. It contains two buttons to switch the LED on and off. Save the HTML page onto your Pico under the name index.html. Now it is time to create a socket and listen for connections. If we detect a connection, we check if the LED on or LED off button was pressed. For me, the request contained the corresponding string for LED on 10 times if the LED on button was pressed and the corresponding string for LED off 10 times in case the LED off button was pressed. Since these values might be different for you, you might want to print out the LED on and LED off variables to check the correct value. As response, we sent the content of our index.html page. Now it's time to run the script. It will print out the IP address of our Pico W. Copy the IP address into the browser of any device that is connected to your home network. The HTML page should load and you will be able to press the on and off buttons to control the onboard LED of your Pico W over Wi-Fi. So that's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, then make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel as we will post videos like this on a weekly basis. Also, check out our store by zero to pick up everything you need for your Raspberry Pi projects.